This morning I'm going to talk about uh, measurements that we made on the NSF NCAR C-130 during uh, NOMADS, which was part of the SOAS uh, suite of uh, experiments, and um, also an, another experiment we did this year in Colorado uh, looking at um, uh, radicals in a more urban uh, environment, and I'll talk about those. I first want to acknowledge my colleague Lee Malden and, and a couple of students that we had to help to collect the data, and of course the NOMADS and FRAPE, those are the two campaigns, the science teams and leadership of those campaigns. Let's see here. So um, I'm going to talk about observations and then a model uh, representation of uh, HOCS during these two campaigns and show a, a, a case from each of the campaigns is kind of representative or an example anyway of, uh, of uh, what the Hawks is doing in these uh, various uh, situations. Um, the observations are uh, done by SIMS. It's chemical conversion, so it's, it's an indirect technique. We convert the uh, radicals to sulfuric acid and then uh, ion, uh, do chemical ionization and mass spectrometry. The model that I'm going to talk about is a steady state model that uh, has uh, uh, explicit Hox chemistry, and you can get away with that because the, the Hox radicals have very short, fairly short lifetimes, and so the steady state assumption is uh, usually valid. Uh, I've added uh, some isoprene and methacrylene isomerization chemistry, and that's addition to the, the normal uh, RO2, HO2, OH chemistry uh, that one finds. That, that well that we know about. Uh, here are the flight tracks for these two experiments. Nomads on the left, you can see uh, we were based in central Tennessee and uh, we have flight tracks all over from Texas up to uh, the Lake Michigan. Uh, we, you notice on the right we did a, a marine, boundary, or a marine uh, environment and uh, it's colored by altitude so we did a number of low-level low runs, low-level legs to look at uh, isoprene fluxes for example. On the right is the uh, Frappe experiment uh, in which we looked at the, this is in north, northeastern Colorado, we looked at the, um, the Denver urban uh, region and then north of the Denver area or oil exploration and production areas and also animal, uh, intensive animal production uh, facilities, so looking at emissions from those. So um, my title talked about urban, biogenic, and mixed environments, and, and this is just an attempt to show how that, that uh, mixing uh, happens. We have metropolitan areas interspersed with biogenic uh, emission areas, and then on the upper right, the uh, oil and gas exploration and the, uh, the um, animal, produ animal production is essentially interspersed right in with that oil and gas production. Uh, so. Turning to nomads, I'm going to look at it kind of on an average sense first and then get to, those, uh, get to a case study. So this shows the uh, fraction of OH loss by various uh, processes. The left bar is when isoprene is less than the detection limit. That's about half the data. And then uh, the rest of the data is parsed by isoprene, bend by isoprene concentration. You can see as isoprene goes up, of course, then isoprene becomes a larger and larger uh, fraction of the OH loss. And the, those other things like CO, which is a, uh, the normal uh, suspect, becomes a, a less of a factor. And of course, at the same time, then we're producing RO2s from that reaction that uh, uh, correspond to those uh, various reactions. So, uh, averaged for the entire NOMADS campaign, this is on the left the, the steady state modeled representation of OH, HO2. HO2 plus RO2, and then RO2 is, is uh, an RO2 from the model, and then on the right is the, the measured values. Uh, the, the peroxy radical channel uh, measures HO2 plus RO2 and HO2, and then we get RO2 by difference. And you can see that um, <clears throat> when we're less than about 100 or 200 parts per trillion, uh, the measurement and the model uh, look pretty good. They agree quite well. Uh, the, the model falls off at higher uh, nitric oxide concentrations, and we've seen this before. This is, uh, at least in part, and perhaps all due to um, the, uh, the spiky nature of NO and how that, uh, the, the using the one-minute average NO to calculate the one-minute average radicals is not correct because, because there's 
uh, the nonlinear nature of the rep of the connection between per the radicals and the NOGs. So there, you have to do the modding a little differently when the when the NO is spiky, and, and that tends to happen when the NO is high. Um, this is taking um, the, the times when the model and the measurements overlap and bending it by both NO and by isoprene. So um, again, on the left, this is when isoprene is less than the detection limit, the measurement and the model for OH and for RO2 uh, are in good agreement. Uh, the uncertainty for the one minute OH is, is about uh, 1.6, so from the top of the plot down here to about 0.6. Uh, but you see that uh, on a, in an average sense, the OH uh, uh, measured is, is larger than the model, or the model is less than the measurements, and it correlates, it, it's systematically uh, uh, changing as the isoprene uh, levels increase. Uh, and the RO2, on the other hand, increases. And th that would imply either some uh, artifact of the way I've done this analysis, but also could imply that uh, uh, additional uh, OH recycling from RO2 over to OH is, is needed to bring the model and the measurements into agreement. Um, just a quick picture here of what the, what the HOX does. This is in the model. Uh, th this uh, shows the um, the Hox Hox reactions are in blue and red up here in the top, and the Hox Nox reactions are in the green and teal. And we see that, uh, of course, at low NO, the uh, the rates of Hox loss are dominated by the Hox Hox reactions. As NO increases, the uh, the Hox Nox uh, processes become competitive. And interestingly, at the, at the intermediate levels, the uh, the alkyl nitrate formation and the nitric acid formation, these are just the gas phase part of the process and uh, are, are comparable. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, one example. This is flight 17 from, uh, uh, from nomads uh, going to southeast, um, or southeast Missouri. We're straight south of St. Louis and the prevailing winds are from the, generally from the north. Uh, this is, uh, so we're looking at this section here, it's blown up, and so we've, we're doing race tracks at various altitudes, so these, uh, these points are colored by altitude. Uh, all of these legs are in the boundary layer, and then we did one leg uh, at a high altitude above the boundary layer just to uh, get a sanity check on what's going on. And, uh, oh, these are back trajectories. Uh, this is from the top, so latitude, longitude. We see uh, the trajectories are all coming from the north. They're colored by where they land in the racetrack. So the ones that are, that are red land on the north side of the racetrack, and the ones that are, that are purple and dark blue land on the south side of the racetrack. And generally, we see that the, the ones on the north come cl closer to uh, the St. Louis region, both in this space and in altitude space whereas the ones on the other end tend to come from a higher, higher altitude and to the west. So here's just some examples of, uh, of uh, species that were measured. Um, so the right-hand side is the north end of the track, and the left-hand side is the south end. You can see CO generally is higher on the north end. NOx is higher on the north end. Formaldehyde is higher on the, on, the, uh, on the southern end, as is isoprene and uh, N-butane is higher on the right. Now this decrease in, in NOx is actually spot on, uh, agrees with what you'd expect based on OH uh, reaction with NO2 and uh, alkyl nitrate formation from RO2 plus NO. And then you need a small, uh, a small emission to uh, actually make everything balanced, but it, that all looks pretty good. Also the isoprene uh, increase is consistent with putting an OH plus isoprene chemistry and then a, uh, then a surface source of isoprene. Uh, here, here, of course, the, the surface source of isoprene is bigger than the, uh, than the loss from OH. So we've almost got kind of a little flow tube kind of experiment, not exactly, kind of a leaky flow tube perhaps would be the way to describe it. But uh, there's, a, there's a wealth of uh, information there that we hope to uh, continue to look at. So uh, 
here this is in kind of an average sense. The, uh, I've divided those racetracks into thirds. And uh, so same kind of plot. The right-hand side is the northern part closest to St. Louis, and the left-hand side the southern part. You can see the, the uh, OH radicals are a little higher on the, uh, on the northern end. The proxy radicals are about the same everywhere. And then if we go to uh, that uh, leg that was above the boundary layer, the proxy radicals drop dramatically. And uh, on the right-hand side, these are various species. Uh, we saw uh, much, uh, most of these we saw in the other, uh, in the other plot. So now moving to a, a frappe case. This is in northern Colorado. The red here is the Denver metropolitan area. And, and you can see, I'm, I'm just going to take a piece of this flight shown on the right-hand side where we uh, did overpasses over the city and uh, up into this oil production and, and animal production region. Um, so here's a number of plots, but the, uh, the blue here shows the latitude. So up here at the northern part of the, um, of the uh, when the latitude's high, we're up at the northern part. You can see formaldehyde jumping up. Uh, various hydrocarbons are jumping up. Uh, this is that when we did a mist approach at near Greeley, and uh, <coughs> you also see uh, many of these species also go up on the southern end, and that's when we're flying over the Denver metropolitan area. Uh, we see ozone that correlates with that, um, and uh, these uh, increases in NOx happen at the same time as, uh, and then we also see SO2 from uh, power production that. Uh, uh, we also have sulfuric gas phase, sulfuric acid measurements that um, the, the, uh, both SO2 and the sulfuric acid increase together, or tend to increase together. Now, if we just expand, uh, the, this is the proxy radicals and OH uh, for that period. You can see that when the, uh, as we expect, when the NO or the NOx jumps up, the, the radicals jump down. Or are depressed, and so we have a we have a, a huge range of NOx that uh, we can uh, put to a test of the of our model mechanism for these for these conditions. So uh, uh, I've shown you some some data from Nomads and Frappe related to uh, photochemistry and Hox, and uh, uh, I think that case on uh, Flight 17 is an interesting one that uh, should provide some good tests of uh, our understanding of free radical uh, chemistry. Um, and the, the, uh, the, role, uh, the fate of iso, uh, isoprene-derived uh, RO2s. I want to uh, acknowledge the, the, the financial support for the uh, project from the National Science Foundation and the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment for FRAPE. Uh, the NCAR Aviation Facility, and NOMADS, the NOMADS leadership, and the NOMADS and FRAPE uh, participants, and be happy to take any questions. Thank you. I did mean to answer Glenn's question back there about the crosstalk between the HO2 and the RO2, and there, there is indeed some crosstalk in, in our measurement, and I've, I've attempted to make a, a first order correction for that. In other words, there's some RO2 measured when we're, say we're measuring HO2, and I've moved that, at least a fraction of that, back over to RO2. So, um, uh, answer that question before it's asked. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like to, it's just outside the error bars of, of the one-minute data. When you start binning one-minute data, you expect the uncertainty to go down some. You don't know how much it's going to go down because the, the bias isn't going to go down, just the random part of it. So um, we need to look at that a little closer to make sure we've done everything properly.
Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you.